So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a deep dive into what we're actually going to be testing in each Alpha 2 testing phase. And this one, we're going to be covering everything to do with phase one. So obviously, I know you think, does it really take a full video to cover just one phase? Now, I'm doing this as I don't want to try and cram all three phases into one video, meaning I miss out a load of information. And some people might find that information useless, but for some people, it will be exactly Exactly what they're interested in. Now, all I want to say is my aim for phase one video and two and three is to condense all that content and where Intrepid didn't go into detail and they didn't have the time and it was, let's face it, it was a bit unorganized. I'm going to break down that information and tell you exactly what we are getting and every aspect of that going forward. So by the end of this video, your guild, yourself as a player or as someone watching content creators like myself, don't forget to subscribe. But what I will say is by the end of this, you should be able to set your guild up for the phases. You should set yourself up for the phases. You'll have all the numbers and information to be organized. And at the same time, it's just a lot of content. So you know what's coming. But without rambling on anymore, I'm just going to jump right into the video and get amongst all the information. So what I will say is just to start off, if you haven't already watched my last video, that actually goes through the three phases, how much it costs and everything you're going to get with that. So maybe before watching this one, if you haven't got the Alpha 2 key already or you're debating it, go back, watch that video. It's a shorter one, but it gives you all the information you need to know for these different testing phases. You can make a, you know, a factual based decision and decide if it's for you. And then coming into this, you know exactly what you want. But either way, if you're not in phase one, you're in phase three or two, still a valid video, still a lot of content. But one thing I will quickly touch back on is when each of these phases will be green. Phase 1 of Alpha 2 testing should begin on the 25th of October for the original Alpha 2 bundles and that'll start on the 8th of November for the new style of Alpha 2 bundles. Now phase 2 of the Alpha 2 testing should begin on the 20th of December and phase 3 should begin on May the 1st 2025. Do bear in mind though as Stephen always says due to testing and development everything we're discussing here could change. I do think it's unlikely for phase 1 and 2 to change. Phase 3 I do think there is maybe a potential for that to change, but we don't know. As I say, I'll keep you updated. The videos will be there. And if you do want a community chat amongst to get involved, feel free to join my Discord. Links in the description below. So phase one's biomes and environment. So phase one will feature the Riverlands, the Sand Squall Desert, the Vandegar Tropics, and within them we'll find 36 resources. We will have a full day and night cycle and all four seasons working with phase one. These three biomes will contain at least 36 points of interest, five node locations that will be able to level up to level three. There will also be one grand dungeon, four pocket dungeons, three world bosses within phase one, and this is something my guild is looking forward to testing heavily. Can't wait to get involved, really buzzing it so close, it's been a long time, I'm sure everyone else is, but this personally, easing into it, jumping into this content, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think for the biomes and environment, I'm quite happy with this, and yeah, for three days and the weekends, I, I kind of feel this is kind of fairly balanced. I don't really think we need more because it's not like it's up seven days. As for nodes, within the nodes, we'll have access to four service buildings, five default buildings, eight active constructed buildings, and five passive constructed buildings. The node system will also have node currency, citizenship, May ship running meaning will also have access to buy orders, play commodities and mayoral commissions. Now when it comes to character progression, which obviously everyone loves, when it comes to characters we'll have access to three races. We're going to have access to the Vec, the Kalar and the Empyrean. What I will say on that though is do note that Empyrean won't be in phase one day one. We'll have access to six archetypes, which is the tank, the fighter, the mage, the cleric, the ranger and bard. I'm going to be honest, depending on the passive buffs eventually down the line of what the races bring, I will be basing my build off that, but going into phase one, probably just going to hit the Vec, highly likely. It's going to be a Vec fighter, but between them seven archetypes, they will have 130 abilities, 60 passives and 22 status conditions. And when it comes to weapons, we're going to have access to the two-handed grip sword, the scepter, the one-handed mace, the one-handed sword, the wand, longbow, shortbow and the 
the spellbook. Each weapon will have 30 nodes within its weapon skill tree. We'll also have access to shields and focuses for the offhand slot. Gear progression will be in phase 1, however it won't be the full system we talked about in my armour video. Instead we're going to get 460 plus unique pieces of gear with gear enchantments, item deconstruction and item repair in its place, which I personally don't think is a bad thing. I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of the stuff in the past we've covered does start changing and as we're developing and as we're testing, we'll find things that ain't gonna work and when they have more and more plays in and there's more accurate feedback and, and better quality feedback coming in, I, I think they'll change a lot of this and you know, a lot of these older videos will probably be redundant, but as it goes, this is part of being a content creator for a game like this. You just need to keep on it, you need to keep you know on the latest information and I actually find it quite good because it gives you stuff to cover and it's keeping things changing and fresh for us and, and we can kind of see how it goes. The character progression I'm really happy with for the three days we'll be playing each weekend. I think that's fairly solid um, and I'm really excited to get involved in that as well. So this is summer everyone wants to get involved in personally. I'm really looking forward to it and, and yeah it's, it's going to be good is the PvP content. So when it comes to the PvP in phase one we'll have quite a large amount of content and we're going to have stuff like open world flagging including the corruption system. Them. Will that work? Will it be an absolute shit show? I honestly don't know. Looking forward to seeing how that works. I do have my opinions on the corruption system long term and post launch. I'm not entirely sure it's going to be working that efficiently. I think there's many cheeses to it. Uh, but it is what Steven and Intrepid have done. It's kind of the best thing we can do. But I can already think, and we've already talked about ways around this. But at least that is there. And it's a nice system to test and give them feedback on. The Lawless Zones, the Guild Wars, now that's going to be brilliant. Node Wars, we've got spike event being in its place and caravans with caravan management 45 caravan components cargo rafts and caravan events being in place too so i personally think it doesn't sound like a lot of content there but trust me there's a lot of content there and we're gonna have fun with that he's gonna be pretty brilliant so for phase one this is really solid and being that we went to get our fix from like arch age classic or arch rage or these absolute ancient games to be fair there's probably gonna be more fun and content within this testing phase than we've been playing for many years because obviously with a more competitive pvp oriented guild and with a lot of mmos being not like that these days you know it's hard to come by modern ones that are that aren't paid to win and obviously we're also not a paid to win guild we don't like that shit hence why we're here on ashes pve content because obviously you can't have the pvp without the pve pvx game and all the systems are pretty brilliant and i want to heavily get involved in this too so what pve content are we going to be getting and don't worry for the more pve focus players there is a lot in place for you too. So we're going to have 149 story driven quests and commissions, 16 public events, 111 treasure maps, we mentioned them previously but there will be 1 grand dungeon, 4 pocket dungeons and 3 world bosses. There will be level 25 for arts and professions which is going to include 15 unique gathering tools, 33 unique gatherables, 400 plus processing recipes, 600 plus crafting recipes, 38 unique animals for hunting and fishing and our first look at surveying so this is some really really solid content for phase one on them three days you will be consistently organized testing these i mean it's really good we, we are getting some serious content here which yet again on paper maybe doesn't sound like it's a lot but it is good and it's very repeatable and you can kind of get better and better and really get a grasp of what's going on here now i'm thinking as a guild leader and a competitive player but for me this is solid and if it isn't for you phase one and you don't think it's enough as i say i'll be streaming i'll be covering it just get subbed keep involved so finally to finish off some quality of life systems that'll be in place for phase one we're gonna have flying ground and water mounts a mail system player trading party and raid makers chat for guilds parties citizenship and obviously global chat now these are some basic systems that are needed that are going to be there so I'm not sure how the flying is going to work because obviously these are going to be raw mounts and you're going to need a castle or mere ship and certain things like that but maybe they're just going to give us them but that also seems a bit redundant because then it takes away from exploring so I'm sure they'll maybe go into that more or even so we will try and test them ground and water mounts pretty cool um, the water content won't be that heavy but at least we can test 
testing while I'm getting involved. Mill system, obviously that's going to be super useful. Player trading is a must. Party and raid makers is yet another must. And chat for guilds, obviously that's needed, but realistically on a game like this, shouldn't be using guild chat. You can, obviously, if you're muted, but you want to be in VC, definitely for, you know, how heavy PvP this is going to be, because you can't really shot call, you can't really PvP if someone's typing in chat, because if you go to type in chat, guess what? You're dead, your resources are gone. I'm thinking the resource drop is probably going to be about 15-20% at max. I don't think that's high enough. Hopefully I'm wrong. I don't think I will be though from many things I've heard from Steven in the past day. And maybe they'll balance that. I do think resource drops on this should be about like 35% on a bit of a ramble there, but that's my opinion. But that is all the information we have on phase one. I think it's really solid. I hope you guys do think that's pretty good as well. Let me know in the comment section if you think they've missed anything, if more should be added to the game in phase one. And are you in phase one? Do you think this is enough, that extra £20 or £10 for this? Do you think it's worth it? I don't care if you disagree with me. I just want to know your feedback. I want to know your opinions. I want to know what people watching this game and the community are thinking. As I said before, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Much more content coming. Drop a like, share the video to whoever you like, get involved. And um, yeah, if you're looking for the community Discord, hit that link below. If you're looking for a guild, you can always apply. We are strict. We are semi-hardcore to hardcore. Do bear that in mind. But as always, really do appreciate you watching the video and i'll catch you in the next one cheers